Opposition activists being arrested and beaten by security forces during a protest march. Four men are seen being dragged one by one into a van. Then a light behind the vehicle helps highlight what appears to be violence inside. Well, the video can't be independently verified, but it's thought to have been filmed in the capital, Damascus, on Monday. Well, foreign journalists are banned from entering Syria, so our foreign affairs editor, Tim Marshall, sent this report from neighbouring Lebanon. The video is said to have been filmed in Damascus. It does look like one of the shopping areas outside of the city centre. Suddenly, a chase. It's unclear why, but some protesters run into a shop. Uniformed officers arrive. What are probably the Mukhabarat, the secret police, soon follow. Several young men are dragged into a van and beaten. One is struck by a truncheon. We can't be sure exactly what has happened and why, but activists tell us the security forces are targeting people who organize the protests. They say people are tortured, then thrown back onto the streets as a warning to others. The video is interesting on a number of counts. Uh, one is that it gives credence to what opposition activists here say has been a change of tactic by the security forces that as well as opening fire on large crowds, when it comes to small crowds they get the, what they think are the ringleaders, throw them into the vans and you saw them being beaten and they are then tortured, it is claimed, something the Syrian authorities deny. They're then thrown out onto the streets to recount their tales in order to frighten people into not going back out on the street. We have no proof that that's happening, but that is the key claim that is made. But also when you watch the video closely, you see a small number of people marching through the streets, and then you see the ordinary people uh, of the capital, if that's what it is, they're simply watching them, and then they carry on about their normal daily business. And that gives you a clue to what's going on inside the country. It is in turmoil. The whole country uh, is watching what is happening. But very few people of the 22 million population are actually taking part in these demonstrations. There is without doubt great anger against the regime from large sections of the population. But either because they're cowed or because they fear uh, the disruption that could be caused if the whole place went out, they're not coming out in large numbers. That was Tim Marshall there. Now 300 people arrested in the Syrian city of Baniaz since tanks moved into residential areas last week have been released. According to a Syrian human rights group, another 200 people, among them protest leaders, remain in jail. Water, electricity and telecommunications have been restored to the city, but the military remains deployed in major streets. America's Mississippi River has hit its highest levels for more than 70 years, forcing thousands of people to leave their homes. Rising in Minnesota, the big river reaches the sea over 2,300 miles away down in Louisiana. Even when it's not in flood, it's vast with an average width of half a mile. But in Memphis, Tennessee, it's already swollen to nearly three miles across. Its average normal depth varies along its length, but in the main shipping channel, it's usually three meters. That's just over nine feet. Now, on Tuesday in Memphis, it rose to 14 and a half meters. That's over 47 feet and will stay that way for at least 24 hours. And all that water still has more than a thousand miles to go before it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. Our U.S. correspondent, Greg Milam, reports. They call it the mighty Mississippi, but the biggest river in the United States has rarely looked like this. The worst floods for 70 years. Homes and roads, livelihoods swallowed up. There was no escape for low-lying areas around Memphis in Tennessee. Only a complex of levees and natural bluffs protected the rest of the city. The waters remain at near record high levels. Among the unlucky ones, a row of popular Memphis casinos cut off and with the immediate future uncertain. Thousands of people have been driven from their homes into shelters, now with nothing to do but wait for the waters to recede. Satellite images from a year ago show the Mississippi as a blue slither. This week, the swelling is all too clear. In Devil's Bluff, Russell Petty's home is the only one that survived. The whole community working around the clock for five days, filling 45,000 sandbags. Everybody else basically gave up on their home. They were overwhelmed by the water. And Russell just, he hung in there. And everybody pulled together and everybody worked 
to save his house because he, they wouldn't, he wasn't going to let them give up on him. And as that river keeps rolling along, it has become something of a tourist attraction in itself. Authorities in Louisiana believe the opening of floodgates called the spillway will save New Orleans. Are you all worried about how high the river is? Yeah, because we heard that we might have to evacuate if it gets too high. It's pretty amazing. I thought I'd be the only guy out here, and uh, it's a big event. The state has even started moving inmates from this prison to a jail on higher ground. America's south has seen weeks of tornadoes and thunderstorms, torrential rains filling a river system already swollen by the melting of heavy winter snow. Those who call the Mississippi home accept this as a fact of life. If you're going to live along the river, you're going to take some risk of, uh, of the river going up and down. And uh, So we were aware of that. It will take two, maybe three weeks before this water has gone. They can only guess what will be left behind. Greg Milam, Sky News, Washington. The Duchess of York has spoken for the first time of how hurt she was not to have been invited to the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton. In a television interview with Oprah Winfrey, Sarah Ferguson said she felt ostracised and totally worthless. Sky's Alistair Bunkle reports. Sarah Ferguson wasn't the only notable absentee from the royal wedding, but the fact that her daughters and former husband were so prominent during the day, the lack of an invitation stood out more than others, perhaps. Now, Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, confronts it all. You are living in the castle with the Queen. She's given an interview to her friend, the American chat show host, Oprah Winfrey. It was filmed in Chicago and will be broadcast tomorrow. How hurtful was it to not be invited? It was uh, so difficult uh, mm -hmm. because I wanted to be there with my girls and, mm -hmm. to, and to be get, getting them dressed and to go mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. And also it was so hard because the last bride up that aisle was me. Mm -hmm. And I knew the, all those feelings. And um, in fact, uh, when Andrew went with the girls, mm -hmm. we were talking all morning. And he was saying, it's okay, just remember we had such a good day, our wedding was so perfect, and mm -hmm. it, you know, because we're such a unit together. It, I, he made me feel very part of the day on April the 29th. Mm -hmm. Last year, Sarah Ferguson was filmed by an undercover reporter offering to sell access to her former husband for half a million pounds. She admitted at the time that she was close to bankruptcy and felt ostracized. In that respect, she maintains that she had a close relationship with Princess Diana, who also, at times, struggled to fit in with the royal family. I, I think Diana would be so proud of her son. Mm -hmm. And her, both of them, you know, mm -hmm. they did a great job. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I sort of really love the feeling that sort of Diana and I, we both weren't there. Mm -hmm. but, but I was there, I'm here to, to say how proud she would have been. And, mm -hmm. and Kate looked utterly beautiful. You wonder how well these interviews are received by Buckingham Palace, but this is how Sarah Ferguson has decided to rebuild her life and her career. A part of that process will include a television show on the American cable channel, owned by Oprah Winfrey. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News.